Welcome to the linear programming problem formulation example for alloy mix. Now, what is an alloy? So, an alloy is a metallic composition of two or more elements. In this example, we are looking at an alloy which is composed of copper and nickel, which are the two elements. A research laboratory has two melts of copper nickel alloy to make up a new alloy. The composition of metals is as under. So there are two melts, melt 1 and melt 2. Now this composition is in terms of parts. That means how many parts of copper and nickel are there in melt 1. So this is something like a ratio. So copper is two parts while nickel is one part. So basically we can say that copper and nickel for melt 1 are in the ratio 2 is to 1. While for melt 2 the copper and nickel are in the ratio 1 is to 1. Now to make up the new alloy at least 10 kgs of copper and 6 kgs of nickel is needed. Melt 1 costs rupees 25 per kg while melt 2 costs rupees 30 per kg. Write the LP model for the quantities of each melt to be used to minimize the cost. So basically in this example we have been given two alloys 1 and 2. Each is composed of a certain ratio of copper and nickel. Now the research lab wants to use both these alloys to create another alloy. So both these and they want to create another alloy. Let's say this is alloy number 3. So now let's again understand the composition of melt 1 which has copper and nickel in the ratio 2 is to 1. So let's say this is my alloy number 1. Now if I divide this into 3 equal parts then what this ratio means is that out of these 3 parts 2 parts are copper while 1 part is nickel. So this is our melt number 1. So two parts are copper and one is nickel. Now let's say this is our melt 2. Now let's divide this into four equal parts. Now melt 2 has 1 is to 1 ratio for copper and nickel. So that means if we have four equal parts then half of it that is two parts will be copper while the other two parts will be nickel. So these two parts are copper and these two parts are nickel. So for the first melt out of three two parts are copper. So copper is two by three while nickel is one part out of the three. So Nickel is 1 by 3. In melt 2, copper is 2 parts out of 4. So 2 by 4 or this is 1 by 2. So 1 by 2. And nickel is also 1 by 2. Now further, what we have been given is that to make up the new alloy, at least 10 kgs of copper and 6 kgs of nickel is needed. So basically in this third alloy the total of these two parts of copper and this one part of copper should be greater than or equal to 10 kgs because in the new alloy the copper content should be at least 10 kgs. So that means the total of 
copper for melt 1 and melt 2 should be equal to or greater than 10 kgs to make up the third alloy. Similarly, for nickel, the total of this one part for melt 1 and this one part for melt 2 should be greater than or equal to 6 kgs because in the third alloy the nickel content should be at least 6 kgs. Also melt 1 costs rupees 25 per kg while melt 2 costs rupees 30 per kg. And we are being asked to write an LP model for the quantities of each melt that is 1 and 2 to be used to minimize the cost. So in other words we have to find the quantity of melt 1 and melt 2 to be used for creation of melt 3 so that the overall cost is the least and at the same time we have to take care of the constraints that is copper should be greater than or equal to 10 kgs while nickel should be greater than or equal to 6 kgs. So let's see how we can formulate this into an LP model. So this is the information that has been provided to us in this example. Now the first step in the LP model formulation is to decide on the decision variables. Now in this problem we have to find the quantity of melts of each type to be used in the new alloy. So let's say that x is the quantity in kgs of melt 1 and y is the quantity in kgs of melt 2. So here x and y are the decision variables. Now the next step is to find the objective function. Now the objective here is to minimize the cost of material to be used for making alloy number 3. Now the material to be used in the creation of alloy number 3 is melt 1 and melt 2. So the total cost of the third alloy is the total cost of melt 1 and melt 2 to be used in the creation of the new alloy. Now we have been given that the per kg cost of melt 1 is 25 rupees and we have considered x kgs as the quantity of melt 1 in the third alloy. So for 1 kg the cost is 25 rupees. So for x kgs how much is the cost? let's say this is x1. So now cross multiplication. So x1 into 1 is equal to 25x. Now similarly for the second melt the cost per kg is 30 rupees. So for 1 kg the cost is 30. So how much is the cost for y kgs? Let's say this is y1. So again cross multiplication y1 is 30y. So the cost of x kgs of melt 1 is 25x while the cost of y kgs of melt 2 is 30y. So the total cost of melt 3 becomes 25x plus 30y. Let's say this is c and our objective is to minimize this c.
Now the next step is to note down the constraints. So the first constraint that has been given to us is that in the new alloy the total quantity of copper should at least be 10 kgs. Now we have assumed that the total quantity of melt 1 is x in the new alloy and the total quantity of melt 2 is y in the new alloy. So first let's consider melt 1 and the quantity of copper. Now melt 1 has two parts out of every three parts as copper. So for every 1 kg of melt 1, 2 by third kgs is copper. So for 1 kg, 2 by third is copper and 1 by third is nickel. For 2 kgs of melt 1, 2 by 3 into 2 kgs is copper and 1 by 3 into 2 kgs is nickel. For 3 kgs of melt 1, 2 by 3 into 3 kgs is copper while 1 by 3 into 3 kgs is nickel. So for x kgs of melt 1, 2 by 3 into x kgs is copper while 1 by 3 into x kgs is nickel. Similarly, the quantity of copper for y kgs of melt 2 is going to be 1 by 2 times y because copper is 1 out of every 2 parts. So for 1 kg, copper is 1 by 2 kgs. For 2 kgs of melt 2, copper is 1 by 2 multiplied by 2. For 3 kgs of melt 2, copper is 3 into 1 by 2 kgs and so on. So let me note it down here. So for x kgs of melt 1, the amount of copper is 2 by 3 times x and for y kgs of melt 2, the amount of copper is 1 by 2 times y. So our first constraint is 2 by 3 times x which is this here plus 1 by 2 times y which is this here should be greater than or equal to 10 kgs because the new alloy should have at least 10 kgs. Now let's move to the second constraint. Now the second constraint says that the quantity of nickel in the third alloy should at least be 6 kgs. Now the amount of nickel in x kgs of melt 1 is 1 by 3 times x while the amount of nickel in y kgs of melt 2 is 1 by 2 times y. So basically our second constraint becomes 1 by 3x plus 1 by 2y is greater than or equal to 6. And our third constraint is the constraint for all LB models which says x and y should be greater than or equal to 0. So this is our LP model for this example.